Closing arguments set for Monday in the Derek Chauvin murder trial. Now that both sides have rested their cases, CBS correspondent Skylar Henry is live in Minneapolis tonight where the jury will have to decide the former officer's fate without hearing from him. Skylar? Hey, Ken, good evening to you. That's right. Former police officer Derek Chauvin chose not to take the stand today. Uh, court will break tomorrow, and then closing arguments will begin on Monday. After that, the judge will give the jury instructions, and then they will begin the deliberation process, getting to a verdict on Derek Chauvin. You understand that if you uh, were cross-examined by the state, we could not attempt to limit the scope of your testimony. The state would be given broad latitude to ask you questions. Do you understand that? Yes. Former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin opted not to take the stand in his own defense. Uh -huh. I will invoke my Fifth Amendment privilege today. The decision whether or not to testify take this off, is entirely yours. In other words, it's a personal right. Mr. Nelson makes a lot of the decisions in trial. But one he cannot make for you is whether or not you testify. And he can give you advice, and you can take that advice or reject that advice. But the decision ultimately has to be yours and not his. Uh, is this your decision not to testify? It is, Your Honor. The prosecution then recalled a medical expert who said the maximum amount of carbon monoxide in George Floyd's body was 2%. Refuting a defense witness's theory that exhaust from the squad car next to Floyd led to possible carbon monoxide poisoning. Two percent of carboxyhemoglobin is within the normal range. Now that both sides have rested their cases, closing arguments are set for Monday. And the judge had this advice for jurors as they prepare to deliberate. If I were you, I would plan for long and hope for short. Uh, Basically, it's up to the jury how long you deliberate. Chauvin is facing second and third degree murder charges, as well as another second degree manslaughter charge. Yeah, I think, Skyler, the judge kind of said it all there. Um, since uh, the defendant is facing multiple charges, um, what are we expecting uh, during deliberations? Any guess? Right. So I will take you inside the deliberation room and then also outside of it. Inside, the jury will be sequestered away from any sort of outside influence. That means no smartphones, no computers, and in some cases, some of them may not even have televisions. They will only have access to bailiffs in terms of trying to get any sort of information out, say, to a loved one if they needed to. Uh, and on the outside, the city of Minneapolis hunkering down. We've seen businesses start to board up, law enforcement presence beefing up as well. We've seen many, many government buildings fortified in terms of fencing as well as National Guard and police around the clock awaiting this verdict here. And just to give a little bit more context in terms of a timeline here, in other cases involving Minneapolis police officers involved in deadly shootings that went to trial in recent years, the jury came up with a verdict in as short as two days and as long as a week. So we really could be seeing something happen in the middle of next week or by the end of next week or perhaps even longer. Never try to predict what a jury is going to do. Skylar Henry, live for us in Minneapolis this evening. Skylar, thank you.